Pain can be defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage, so it is a very subjective experience. Pain is a very frequent symptom in Parkinson's disease. It actually is one of the most frequently reported non-motor symptoms of the disease and it affects roughly between 40 and 80% of patients. Pain is very heterogeneous in Parkinson's disease. It can be of a muscular type, it can be related to dystonic postures, it can be neuropathic related to damage to, 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 to neurons and, and, and their axons. It can be central, which is a very complex pain syndrome, which can manifest in different ways, and it can be related to acatisia or other syndromes. Uh, it can be related to Parkinson's disease itself or not. For example, many patients uh, will have a pain related to arthralgia or arthrosis or, 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 or other diseases, and this will not be related to Parkinson's disease, but in some cases such pains might be aggravated by Parkinson's disease. Pain can be ameliorated or worsened by dopaminergic treatment, and this is very important uh, for treatment. So. Uh, if you are experiencing pain or any kind of discomfort, you should discuss this with your doctor and your doctor will conduct with what is called a pain history, which consists in a series of questions that your doctor will ask you related to, for example, when pain started, where does it hurt, if pain is contact, co constant throughout the day or if it varies. Uh, if there are specific postures that aggravate pain or ameliorate pain and then uh, your doctor will use rating scales that have been developed for the assessment of pain. Some of these have been developed for use in the general population and some of these are specific for Parkinson's disease. These rating scales uh, are composed by a series of questions that uh, either uh, you or your doctor will complete and the results of all this assessment will allow uh, doctors to uh, perform a therapeutic plan. There are no agents that have uh, demonstrated efficacy and in will control clinical trials but it seems like that the first step in treatment is the optimization of dopaminergic uh, therapy, this is lipodopa, dopamine agonist, or inhibitors of the MAO-B and COMT enzyme, and this, this can mean that the doses of, this medic, of these drugs will be increased or reduced uh, depending on when, on when patients are experiencing pain, and if this does not solve the problem, uh, then uh, Analgesics can be used, for example, uh, Tylenol or, 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 or other commonly used uh, analgesic drugs. Uh, the best efficacy uh, has been documented for oxycodone naloxone prolonged release, and this, there has been uh, uh, recently published a uh, uh, phase two study. This is a, a, an early study, and results are, were positive and very interesting, and hopefully they will be uh, repeated in, uh, in more extensive trials. Then, for example, botulinum toxin can be used for dystonic pain, either in the trunk or in other parts of the body. And uh, in cases where pain is intractable and uh, when patients show uh, motor fluctuations, for example, wearing off or on-off phenomena, uh, neurosurgical approaches can be offered, for example, deep brain stimulation of the subthalamic nucleus. And there are other uh, treatment strategies with uh, much less documented efficacy, for example, uh, gabapentin or pregabalin for neuropathic pain uh, has, been studied, has been shown some efficacy in, in, in some case reports, and uh, physical therapy or massage or acupuncture or, 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 treatment, or treatment like those have also shown some efficacy in open-label studies and they, they seem very promising but must be uh, studied by means of uh, controlled clinical trials.